Sir. Eat that meat, Jennifer. Why doesn't that feather look pleasant? Fasten your taste buds for gastronomic rhyme. Cause us two bad ladies are itching up to get to New York kitchen. Yeah! Oh, yes. Perfect. I'm taking us on the mission of mercy, dear. Really? Pray, tell me more. The Vidaric priests at Westminster Cathedral are in a spot of bother and need our help, kitchen-wise. Oh, splendid. Will we get a plenary indulgence? I shouldn't be surprised. Here we are. Isn't your uncle close to the cardinal or something? Yes, he's the cardinal Jean de Warmo. He's huh? his gentleman in waiting. And it, he's the this cardinal is his sixth one. He's done. He's got five five other cardinals under the sod. And <laughs> my and my grandfather was doing them before him. Good heavens! A family industry. It's an industry. What does he wear? He wears full court dress. You know, breeches, diamond shoes, lace. Swords, hats. How wonderful. All that. We must now go and look for Father Mark. Right, well, this is your territory, Jennifer. He's very helpful. He's a sweet creature. Oh, good. That's Father Mark. Oh, right. Ladies, how nice to see you. Hello, Father. You found me all right. It's the heavens. <laughs> it's a big place. Easy to get lost in yeah, here. Don't know, I never know where you're going to be. <laughs> but you, you both know the building quite well, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. Yes. Since childhood. Since child, yes, you'll mm. have seen many changes we, we've added to the, to the decoration since then. And we're hoping that in, in the future to, to finish the marbling and the mosaics. So how, how old is the cathedral now? It's 100 years old. Uh, last year we had the, the great centenary celebrations. Oh. Yes, we had lots of services and the Queen came. We're very pleased about that. Maybe we'll get her back. Maybe we will. Who, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> We're very grateful you've come because you know that our Portuguese nuns are on holiday at the moment, the oh, nuns yes. who, who cook for us. So the fathers are all starving, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're very glad you've arrived. <laughs> we're, 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 I'll take you through to the clergy house, then, yes. if you'd like to follow me. To the kitchens. Morning, Monsignor. Morning. So this is the long corridor, it's the artery joining the cathedral and the clergy house where the priests live. How many priests have we got in the clergy house? Uh, we have 15 priests here and one of them I want you to meet especially is Father Sean. He's our market gardener. He grows vegetables on a little plot on the roof. Is he that? Uh, has he a passion for it? He has. He's got very green fingers. Ah. He spends hours with his watering can. <laughs> He's a martyr to his tomatoes. A martyr. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we are, ladies. The kitchen is off to your left. Thank you for coming. Thank very you. good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Goodbye. I'm going to cook hot stuffed artichokes. This is that most neglected of vegetables, the globe artichoke. We don't make enough of them in Great Britain, unlike that Italian princess, Catherine de Medici, who taught the French how to cook who nearly died of a surfeit of them on her wedding day. Now, there is quite a lot of care and preparation in getting an artichoke ready. And I'm going to start by breaking off the stem end of the artichoke. Uh, and as you break it off, you'll see that quite a lot of the fibres come with it. And that means that they won't be sort of embedded in the nice, juicy artichoke heart at the bottom. And then I'm going to pull off some of the outside leaves at the bottom, which you don't need, those are useless little leaves. And I'm again going to trim some of the outer leaves. When you do this, artichokes turn black very quickly. And so what you want to do is rub any area that you cut with lemon juice. And I'm going to cut down from the top. You see, I'm cutting down about a, the top third. Again with the lemon juice. And then cut down 
and remove the centre bit, the core of the plant, so that you can get at the choke underneath all that fibrous stuff. That's the choke. If you eat that, you'll feel very ill indeed. And you really want to be very careful at this stage to get everything out. And throw it straight in the bin. Don't leave it lying around where it can get into things. Does bear as opening an oyster? No. Much worse than opening an oyster, <laughs> really. There we are. And then you see inside you've got the lovely clean cup and a perfect base for putting in your stuffing. Well, I've got three more of these labours of Hercules to do, so uh, do you want to get on with whatever it is you are at? Yes, of course. I've been frying bacon until it's really crisp. I'm doing a dish which is mainly broad beans, and the first time I ever had it was in a house called The Fitz, just outside Cockermouth in Cumberland. And so, to me, beans means Fitz. What I've done, I've got this bacon... Really crispy. And very good bacon, I'm sure. Very good bacon. None of that milky muck in the bottom of the pan. Water or whatever it is they put in nasty bacon. Now we'll chop an egg or two. Great thing is when you peel your eggs beforehand, put them into a, a bowl of cold water and that prevents that nasty sort of black ring. Or at least it helps. All we've got to do is... Um, Chop them up, roughly. This is a great deal easier than poor Clarissa's hacking away at those monsters. Now, these beans are already boiled, and you, you boil them, depending on their size, until they're just tender. You don't want them overdone, and they should be tiny. These, I'm afraid, are a little large, but the smaller, the better. Now, we just bundle those egg pieces over the beans, Put a quantity of parsley and chives over the top. Give them a little... Look, already they begin to look ravishing. The crispy bacon. You see, it's really easy. And everybody loves it. Everyone I've ever met, anyway. If they didn't, I think I would stop acquaintanceship. Oh, well. <laughs> Glad to say I love broad beans. And then you lattice the top with dear little anchovy fillets. There we are. That's all you have to do, except I've got a dressing here of lemon juice and olive oil and salt and pepper. Uh, quite a lot of lemon juice to make it tart. Sprinkle it over quite generously. Ravishing. Now we must chill it for just about half an hour and serve it as the first course. Easy. There, that's me done. I think I'll go and treat Father Mark to a glass of champagne. It was only a glass of champagne, but it led a poor girl to sin. <laughs> well, I have cleaned all my artichokes and I'm ready now to make my stuffing. I've got some black olives which have been cut into pieces some white breadcrumbs, some chopped parsley, either curly or flat, it really doesn't matter, some chopped garlic, crushed chopped garlic, you can put in as much or as little as you like. If you think you're getting the smell of garlic, well the answer is you just chew a bunch of parsley, it works perfectly. And some chopped onion, Some capers, just cut in half. I love capers. <gasps> capers with everything. It's my 18th century soul. Chopped tomatoes, which have been de-seeded and skinned. And then about four ounces of Parmesan cheese, which have been coarsely slithered, grated, whatever you like. And then mix that up. And now into the cavity that you have so beautifully prepared for it, you put your stuffing. In the 80s, I was sent to 
teach etiquette to yuppies in Leeds. I went up on the train every week. And one of the things they wanted to learn how to, uh, to eat was the artichoke. They were very worried about eating artichokes. And I used to say, well, use your hands. You, know, there's no, you can't eat it any other way. You've just got to pull the leaves off, dip them in your sauce and eat them. And only when you get to the bottom, when you get to the heart of the artichoke, do you pick up your knife and fork. They couldn't understand this at all. And I said, well, do you try and eat it any other way? But uh, the yuppie has gone and the artichoke remains. So, there we are. Now they're stuffed and they're ready to be cooked. And I shall just take them over to the oven. Now, I've got some oil that I've been warming here, some olive oil just covering the bottom of the pan and I'm going to put my artichokes in it. Hey ho, watcha. They look magnificent. Mmm, don't they look good? Terrific. Very snug. Mmm, snug as a bug in a rug. And now? And I'm just going to pour some white wine over them. Right, third of a bottle. And now I need a lid. A lid? Ah, oh, well done. And now it's got to go in the oven. Will you give me a hand? It weighs a ton. Yeah. Right, well, they'll take about an hour. Well, here we are on the roof. Is that a terrific view? Isn't it wonderful? Hello, Father Sean. Good morning. We've come oh. to plunder you. Oh, really? <laughs> plunder your <laughs> wares. Oh. <laughs> Hello, I'm Clarissa. Hello, nice to meet you. You're the market Hi. gardener priest. Sort of, sort of, yes. What are your tomatoes? Well, there's uh, Moneymaker and Gardener's Delight. Oh, those aubergines. Good Yes, heavens. yes. Sweet. Yes. yes. And what are they? And, and little peppers, baby peppers there. But um, I'm afraid there's nothing ripe at the moment. We're, we're, uh, they went in late this year. I wonder where else we can find ecclesiastical vegetables. <laughs> where do you think? Well, I, I'm told there that there, there are Anglican nuns at Ham. Oh. Uh, just not, not too far from here. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I've heard of them. Mm. They have a fine walled garden, haven't they? Yes, yes. That would be nice. Mm. I think your garden's sweet, dear. Thank you. But it's not big enough. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave you to your watering. OK, so I couldn't help you. I'm sure it'll be splendid. <laughs> Just a little more sun. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Lord will provide. <laughs> Mollis. Which hazel to be, dear? Nothing wrong with the Latin. Yeah, but I understand. Which hazel better? I it's very romantic. Ah, oh. oh, sister, can you tell us the way to the vegetable garden? Oh, yes, straight through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bye -bye. sister. Hello. Gosh, what a wonderful garden you've got. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. Hello, I'm Clarissa and this is Jennifer. Hi. Hi. And we're cooking for the priests at Westminster Cathedral mm -hmm. and they recommended that we should come and ask you if we might take some vegetables. Oh, that's very nice of them. Yeah, we have lots of vegetables here, as you can see. Oh, indeed. And is that, that a pumpkin there? Over there, yeah, that's pumpkin. We have lots of them. The sisters really like them. They store all the whole winter and, we, I mean, they get very hot and yeah. they need to axe to cut yes, them. Yes, indeed. So the sisters sometimes really have trouble cutting these so, things. They take a hatchet, do, do they? No, they try it with a knife, but there have been some difficulties with it. Blood flowing? Yes, <laughs> that too sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Do you use the flowers? Do you, uh, do you cook the flowers? No. What can you do with the flowers? You can either stuff them and then fry them, yeah. or just dip them into a very light uh, batter, a batter, like the Italians do. Oh. And they, they whip in white of egg as well to make it very light and crispy. Yes. And then they bring them a sort of wonderful great dish of golden flowers. Oh, I must all try crispy. that. Yeah. Delicious. 
All right. What would you like? What do you need? I'd like some peaches if you have them. Are they ready? Yes, we have yeah. a few in yeah. the greenhouse. Okay. And what vegetables? Well, I'd like, like a cabbage. Oh, yeah, sure. There's some over there and there's some quite close to the path. Right. Well, I'll go and cut my cabbage yeah. then if you're happy. Okay. And we can go and get the peaches. Yes, that'd be lovely. Great treat to be able to go and pick peaches. <laughs> Magnificent. Good heavens, what have you got there? Look at that. I've got the wonderful peaches. They lovely. Mmm. I once lived with a man who would have committed acts of violence upon my person had I not been able to intervene by swiftly cooking bubble and squeak, which is what I'm making here. In the frying pan, I've got an ounce of lard and the onions. You must use either lard or beef dripping. They're the only fats you can really get to sufficiently high temperatures to make this dish properly. If you don't, for some reason, use either of those, then go and cook something else. Trips are much better with, with beef dripping, aren't they? Absolutely. They, they make them really good. And I have here some potatoes, which I'm just finishing chopping. Look, 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 Jennifer, look at my nice 18th century vegetable chopper. It's a marvellous creature. It's American, of all things. They were into gadgets even then. And what you must also do when you're chopping the potatoes is to crush them slightly. They just take up the fat better. And I'm going to add to the lard and the onions the potatoes and the greens. You can use any greens. This happens to be cabbage. I like savoy cabbage or green cabbage, not white cabbage particularly. Turnip tops. Turnip tops particularly good. Yeah. Season and then a half an ounce of lard which you just put onto the top of it and let it cook in. It's called bubble and squeak because of the noise it makes. If you listen, you hear the sort of sizzle and uh, bubble of the fat and the squeaking of the greens. <laughs> <laughs> the howl of a lettuce as it's plucked from the earth. No you problem. really upset people. Oh, good. <laughs> Keep pressing it down and there'll be a lovely brown crust underneath. That is the secret of bubble and squeak. You know, undercooked bubble and squeak is just a mess, but lovely brown, crusty bubble and squeak, that's the thing. So this is going to take about another 15 minutes, so do you want to get on with yours? What I'm making is a variation on the, on the fruit summer pudding. I'm making a tomato pudding. What you do is dip them into boiling water, the tomatoes, just for about half a minute, and peel them, that's easy. Then chop roughly like this, and then you put them in a bowl. And then we'll season it with some salt, proper salt, pinch of sugar. It's always good on tomatoes, little sugar, it brings out the flavour. Do try and get very good tomatoes, smell them before you buy them. Pepper. Now, what we have here is passata, which, is, which merely means uh, sieved tomatoes, passed through a sieve, in fact. And then we have to season it with some Tabasco and some Worcester sauce, quite a lot of Worcester sauce, some lemon juice. Always a good thing, lemon juice. Now, we'll mix that up. Now we must line our bowl with some nice stale Italian bread. I've got this nice little cutter here, which is the same size as the, as the bottom of the bowl. And we'll cut that piece first. Then we'll, we'll, we'll douse the, the bread, we'll dip the bread into the passata, and we'll put it in the bottom of the bowl. That'll make the base. 
And we do the same thing again. We cover them in psalter, press them in, just go on cutting bits so they fit in. Because they'd all join up together in the end, all will be well. No, you see that is more or less it. Now, mix all the tomatoes up with the seasoning. Put some garlic in here. Stir it all up. Then get some basil and tear the leaves in. Who was it who put their lover's head in a pot of basil? Isabel, the face was white and green, that livid spot. I used to love that. She buried it, and the basil grew a treat. I bet it did, eh? Now, there we are. We've got all this, and we'll pop it in. Squish it down so that it's completely full. And now we'll drizzle olive oil into it. You could mix it in if you wanted to, but it's quite nice if it just sort of soaks through. You give it a little helping hand. Luscious. Now, we want to make a, a lid to cover it. Press it like that. We'll need another bit from the other half. Now, what you have to do is like a summer pudding. Put a lid on it. A saucer will do. And weigh it down. It wouldn't be a bad idea, actually, to put it on a plate. Because it's going to have spillage, and we don't want that. No spillage allowed. Well, it'll make a mess everywhere. And now it needs, I think, about 12 hours in the refrigerator. Six might do, but the, the longer the better, because it, it gets more intense. The taste sort of gets stronger and stronger. Good. So I'm just going to turn this over now. It's not an omelette. You're not supposed to turn it all over in one piece. A little more lard. Sprinkle that on the top. And then pat it down a bit more. Are you nearly finished? Yes, pretty well. I've just got to brown the other side. Won't take long now. When you're ready, mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd be a dear. I want you to pass some raspberries through a sieve to make a sauce for me. Yes, of course I will. While I poach the peaches. That looks lovely and it smells good. Mmm, it smells gorgeous. There you are. Thank you. I've got some water and sugar here I'm making into a syrup because I'm going to make a rather grand version of Peaches Cardinal. Because as we're in this wonderful building, this marvellous Westminster Cathedral, I think we, they ought to be Peaches Cardinal Hume. You wait for this sugar to completely dissolve. Then pop a vanilla pod in. When you finish with the vanilla pod at the end, take it out and dry it and, and keep it in the jar and you can use it again. Put the peaches in. We just leave them there for a few minutes until they're just soft and, and ready to peel. And I'm just making this raspberry sauce, which is perfectly simple. All it is really is the juice of the raspberries that you put through the sieve. and some sugar. And you just mix the two together. And you can use it for anything you like, but please, I implore you, don't call it a coolie. A coolie is a Chinese gentleman in a triangular straw hat. In my book. Yes, carrying things. Carrying things. Very splendid they are. You've peeled them already. Oh, they're, they're very easy to peel once they're poached. I'm going to put some of these bitters from the bark of the Angostura tree over them, just to sort of counteract the sweetness. But some people might prefer the sweetness. I think this gives a special little taste. Lovely. I love bitters. Yeah. Now we must transfer them to a lovely bowl. 
I don't cut them in half, I like them whole. People can deal with the stones themselves. But I like the look of the whole peach. So would you like me to do the honours with this sort? Oh, do the honours, you made it like a good deer. Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, lovely. Such a good colour. Hence the cardinal, hence the, the cardinal. cardinal. Who would want to be a Protestant when you can have cardinals? <laughs> now then, what we'll do is sift a little icing sugar. It will go through the sieve, over the top, in honour of Cardinal Hume's magnificent head of hair. Such a fine man. Now, instead of the ubiquitous mint, because of our Cardinal's name, I'm going to put leaves of Basil of on Of course. His, his Christian name's Basil. How clever George, you are. George Basil. A dish fit for a prince of the church, indeed. Delightful. Bless us, O Lord, and the food we are about to receive. Bless those who have prepared it, and give food to the hungry. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is an excellent and fun first course, with plenty of robust tastes and textures. will soothe the savage male at any hour of the day or night. Serve as a first course with brown bread and butter. Brilliant for supper, even better for lunch. A glass of Baume de Venise or Prosecco would go down a treat with it. Well, I hope that I hope the priests are all having a lovely supper. I hope so too. Look, all looked wonderful. The food. Did you ever want to become a nun? No, never, never. It's not my cup of tea at all. My mother told me they wore calico underwear and ate horrible things, so that was me out for a start. My nuns had very good food, at least we did, but they expelled me and that put me off to them. Didn't they have extraordinary habits? Very. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> to wear, Jennifer, to wear. Yes, they had the chicest habits in the world, actually. They were designed by Worth, which was pretty grand, wasn't it? Amazing. Amazing. Quite amazing. Well, cheers. <laughs> Cheers, dear. And to the Almighty, I think. And very much to the Almighty. to choke heart at the bottom and then I'm going to pull off some of the outside leaves at the bottom which you don't need those are useless little leaves and I'm again going to trim some of the outer leaves when you do this artichokes turn black very quickly and so what you want to do is rub any area that you cut with lemon juice And I'm going to cut down from the top. You see, I'm cutting down about a th the top third. Again with the lemon juice. And then cut down and remove the centre bit, the core of the plant, so that you can get at the choke underneath. 
all that fibrous stuff. That's the choke. If you eat that, you'll feel very ill indeed. And you really want to be very careful at this stage to get everything out. And throw it straight in the bin. Don't leave it lying around where it can get into things. Does bear there's opening an oyster? No. Much worse than opening an oyster. <laughs> I like savoy cabbage or green cabbage. Not white cabbage particularly. Turnip tops. Turnip tops particularly good. Yeah. Season. And then a half an ounce of lard. Which you just put onto the top of it and let it cook in. It's called bubble and squeak because of the noise it makes. If you listen, you'll hear the sort of sizzle and uh, bubble of the fat and the squeaking of the greens. <laughs> <laughs> the howl of a lettuce as it's plucked from the earth. No you much. really upset people. Oh, good. <laughs> Keep pressing it down and there'll be a lovely brown crust underneath. That is the secret of bubble and squeak. You know, undercooked bubble and squeak is just a mess, but lovely brown, crusty bubble and squeak, that's the thing. So this is going to take about another 15 minutes, so do you want to get on with yours? What I'm making is a variation on the, on the fruit summer pudding. I'm making a tomato pudding. What you do is dip them into boiling water, the tomatoes, just for about half a minute, and peel them, that's easy. Then chop roughly like this, and then you put them in a bowl. And then we'll season it with some salt. As you know that our Portuguese nuns are on holiday at the moment, the oh, yes. nuns who, who cook for us. So the fathers are all starving, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're very glad you've arrived. With the, with the... <laughs> I'll take you through to the clergy house, then, yes. if you'd like to follow me. To the kitchens. Morning, Monsignor. So this is the long corridor. It's the artery joining the cathedral and the clergy house where the priests live. How many priests have we got in the clergy house? Uh, we have 15 priests here, and one of them I want you to meet especially is his Father Sean. He's our market gardener. He grows vegetables on a little plot on the roof. Is he a natural? Has he a passion for it? He has. He's got very green fingers. Ah. He spends hours with his watering can. <laughs> He's a master to his tomatoes. A master. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we are, ladies. The kitchen is off to your left. Thank you for coming. Thank very you. good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Bye. Goodbye. I'm going to cook hot stuffed artichokes. This is that most neglected of vegetables, the globe artichoke. We don't make enough of them in Great Britain, unlike that Italian princess, Catherine de Medici, who taught the French how to cook who nearly died of a surfeit of them on her wedding day. Now, there is quite a lot of care and preparation in getting an artichoke ready. And I'm going to start by breaking off the stem end of the artichoke. Uh, and thing, lemon juice. Now, we'll mix that up. Now, we must line our bowl with some nice stale Italian bread. I've got this nice little cutter here, which is the same size as the, as the bottom of the bowl. And we'll cut that piece first. Then we'll, we'll, we'll douse the, the bread, we'll dip the bread into the passata, and we'll put it in the bottom of the bowl. That'll make the base. And we do the same thing again. We cover them in the passata, press them in, just go on cutting bits so they fit in. Because they'll all join up together in the end. All will be well. No, you see that is more or less it. Now, mix all the tomatoes up with the seasoning. Put some garlic in here. Stir it all up. Then get some basil and tear the leaves in. Who was it who put their lover's head in a pot of basil? Isabel, the face was white and green, that livid spot. I used to love that. She buried it, and the basil grew a treat. I bet it did, yeah.
this is the convent in here, Jennifer. Yeah. Right, Michael's convent. Hammer melis mollis. Which is all to be, dear? Nothing wrong with the Latin. Yeah, but I understand which is the better. Trying to say romantic. Ah, oh. oh, sister, can you tell us the way to the vegetable garden? Oh, yes, straight through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bye -bye. sister. Hello. Gosh, what a wonderful garden you've got. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. Hello, I'm Clarissa and this is Jennifer. Hi. Hi. And we're cooking for the priests at Westminster Cathedral mm -hmm. and they recommended that we should come and ask you if we might take some vegetables. Oh, that's very nice of them. Yeah, we have lots of vegetables here, as you can see. Oh, indeed. And is that, that a pumpkin there? Over there, yeah, that's pumpkin. We have lots of them. The sisters really like them. They store all the whole winter and, we, I mean, they get very hot and yeah. they need to axe to cut yes, them. Yes, indeed. So the sisters sometimes really have trouble cutting these so, things. They take a hatchet, do, do they? No, they try it with a knife, but there have been some difficulties. With so the fathers are all starving, so <laughs> we're, we're, we're very glad you've arrived. With the, with the... <laughs> I'll take you through to the clergy house, then, yes. if you'd like to follow me. To the kitchens. Morning, Monsignor. So this is the long corridor, it's the artery joining the cathedral and the clergy house where the priests live. How many priests have we got in the clergy house? Uh, we have 15 priests here and one of them I want you to meet especially is his father Sean. He's our market gardener. He grows vegetables on a little plot on the roof. Is he in that, uh, has he a passion for it? He has, he's got very green fingers. Ah. He spends hours with his watering can. <laughs> he's a martyr to his tomatoes. A martyr. <laughs> <laughs> So, here we are, ladies. The kitchen is off to your left. Thank you for coming. Thank very you. good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye well. now. Bye. Goodbye. I'm going to cook hot stuffed artichokes. This is that most neglected of vegetables, the globe artichoke. We don't make enough of them in Great Britain, unlike that Italian princess, Catherine de Medici, who taught the French how to cook who nearly died of a surfeit of them on her wedding day. Now, there is quite a lot of care and preparation in getting an artichoke ready. And I'm going to start by breaking off the stem end of the artichoke. Uh, and as you break it off, you'll see that quite a lot of the fibres... ...of the bow, that'll make the base. And we do the same thing again. We cover them in the passata press them in, just go on cutting bits so that they fit in, because they'd all join up together in the end, all will be well. Now, you see that is more or less it. Now, mix all the tomatoes up with their seasoning, put some garlic in here, stir it all up, then get some basil and tear the leaves in. Who was it who put their lover's head in a pot of basil? Isabel. The face was white and green, that livid spot. I used to love that. She buried it and the basil grew a treat. I bet it did, eh? Now, there we are. We've got all this and we'll pop it in. Squish it down so that it's completely full. And now we'll drizzle olive oil into it. You could mix it in if you wanted to, but it's quite nice if it just sort of soaks through. You give it a little helping hand. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Lord will provide. <laughs> Convent in here, Jennifer. Yeah. Right, Michael's Convent. Hammer, Melis, Mollis. Which is all to be, dear? Nothing wrong with the Latin. Yeah, but I understand which is the better. Trying to say romantic. 
Oh. Ah, sister, can you tell us the way to the vegetable garden? Oh, yes, straight through. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bye -bye. sister. Hello. Gosh, what a wonderful garden you've got. Oh, thank you. It's amazing. Hello, I'm Clarissa and this is Jennifer. Hi. Hi. And we're cooking for the priests at Westminster Cathedral mm -hmm. and they recommended that we should come and ask you if we might take some vegetables. Oh, that's very nice of them. Yeah, we have lots of vegetables here, as you can see. Oh, indeed. And is that, that a pumpkin there? Over there, yeah, that's pumpkin. We have lots of them. The sisters really like them. They store all the whole winter and, we, I mean, they get very hot then. Yeah. They need to axe to cut yes, them. Yes, indeed. So the sisters sometimes really have trouble cutting these things. They take a 